Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Amen. Are you ready for the Word of God this morning? The title of my message this morning is The Battle Rages. The Battle Rages. Say it be The Battle Rages. Rages. Now the greatest day of our lives is the day you give your life to Jesus. He comes into your heart. He forgives you all your sin. Dwells within you. You're forgiven of all your sin. And that day your eternal destiny is changed. You pass from darkness to life and your life finds new meaning and new purpose. But something else also happens on that day. On that day, we have also changed sides. We have changed sides in a very spiritual war. Our hearts have become a battlefield. A battlefield between good and evil, right and wrong, righteousness and unrighteousness. In fact, it's a battle between God and the devil, God and Satan. And whether you like it or not, you're in this battle. It's not optional. The battle has begun. And you have to choose on which side you're on. As Elijah said so many years ago to the people on Mount Carmel, he says, choose you this day whom you will serve. If the Lord is God, then follow him. Now, as a non-Christian, you didn't have to choose. Why? The devil owns you. You see, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 25, it speaks about when in humility we are are, uh, 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 correcting those who are in opposition. Then he says, if God will perhaps grant them repentance, listen to this, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare, the trap of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Having been taken Captive by him to do what? To do his will. Haven't been taken? Captive. So some other way he's controlling your life and he might even be controlling it and you don't even know he's controlling it because the Bible calls him the father of all lies. He knows how to manipulate and control you and to get to you to do things and you don't even know it. You think you're honoring yourself and you're worshiping the devil. And that's why Ephesians 2 verse 2 in the New King James Version It says, in which you once walked according to the course of the world. In other words, you walked according to the world, the course, that you were going where the world was going. He says, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So once again, that word works is the Greek word energeo which we derive our, 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 the, the word energy from. In other words, uh, a Satan energizes sinners. So 1 John chapter 5, 19, it says, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So when you're operating according to the world, you're under the sway, you're under the direction, the general direction of what the devil wants you to do. In actual fact, you're walking according to his plan. Which means, as a non-Christian, you're owned. And most don't know they're owned. Are you hearing me yet today? And that's why I never in my life have understood people with a half-hearted commitment to Jesus. 
You know, one thing I had realized, and that's why I gave my life to Jesus, is that the world has nothing to offer. It is empty. I thank God as a young man, you know, I had exposure. And I've always, even though I grew up in a Christian home, I was always among unsafe people, always being a witness, whether it's through sports or whether it was at school or a class. And one thing I realized that there's nothing there. Hung around the students with the aspirations of getting an education and then being successful, having the money, having the car, having the house. I'd be between people like this. This is me at the age of 20. And then I'd go play squash and I would play and I'd play league. And then I'd hang around the men that are educated that are already in their 50s, that have the house, that have the car, and have no life. 50, 55 year old, still sitting in the locker rooms, joking about women. Now the women that are here, I'm informing you. I can't talk for the women, I can talk for the men. Because at that time, we knew what a boy was and we knew what a girl was. So you you didn't share locker rooms, you understand? I had to throw that in. (laughs) Then I'd sit here after the squash game and these guys are getting drunk. And their desire is always, oh, sounded the same like an 18-year-old. Everyone living for the weekend. (laughs) Or everyone living for to get away. This is once you've, once you now got the education, got the job, got the money, got the car, and you have money to go somewhere. And I'm sure half of them did it on debt anyway. But off you go and that's it. It's about getting drunk the weekend. It's about messing around and then coming and telling their stories. And sitting around and thinking, there's nothing. It's an empty life. I mean, if your highlight of your life is to bry and watch rugby and get drunk, That's your highlight. That's what you live for. So look, ultimately, thank God I got exposed to that very, very early in my life. Unfortunately, many people never get to that place because they never get to that place where they have enough money to sin. They can't afford the alcohol. (laughs) But the thing is, you're living with inner desire. You're chasing off the wind. You're chasing off the something and there's nothing there. The world has nothing to offer. And that's why when I decided to follow Jesus, for me, it was all or nothing. Why play around in the world and try to live in both? The world is empty does not fulfill and satisfy its empty promises. It's all an illusion. It's all a lie. The devil's got you controlling you. You don't even know. You look back of your life, done nothing. And I see so many people today trying to live in both worlds. They want enough Christianity to get them in heaven, but they still want to live in like hell. But the thing is, it's a miserable life because it is hell. And that's why he challenges in in the word. Choose whom you will serve. Elijah says in 1 Kings 18 verse 21. 
He comes to the people. He says, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. If you're gonna serve Baal, go serve Baal and go. Go serve Baal. If you're gonna follow God, serve God. The same with Joshua. When Joshua was between the people, and he says in Joshua 24 and verse 15, he says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, he says to them, listen to this. He says, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Shout it out, say to me, choose. choose. Bump your neighbor, say neighbor, choose. choose. You see now, he says, goes on, he says, whether the gods of your fathers served on the other side of the river. So whether you're gonna serve the God of your ancestors, if you wanna go serve your ancestors, go serve your ancestors. Don't half half, don't ancestor grave and then come in Jesus. Don't half half. Go serve your ancestors. And if you're gonna serve God, serve God. And this is what he's saying. You're gonna serve the God of your ancestors from the other side of the river. He says, or the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. In other words, you dwell, you serve the God with the people you dwell amongst. He says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me. We will serve the Lord. Same with Moses and the nation of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today. Heaven and earth is witnessing you today. As you make your choice, heaven and earth, the angels and the demons, they are checking, they are witnessing. But he says, I have set before you what? Life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore do what? Choose life. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God. That you may obey his verse, vo a voice. That you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Choose this day whom you will serve. If you're gonna be a Christian, then be a sold out Christian. If you're gonna be a Christian, be a committed Christian. And that's why Jesus said in Revelation 3 verse 16, he says, though so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. But I listen to some pastors and some Christians, the way they speak, they, they would rather do this verse like, I would rather you be hot, um, but lukewarm is the next choice. And cold Oh, that's the last selection. In other words, you know, rather be, 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 be hot, but, but lukewarm surely is better than cold. Half-hearted is better than no commitment. No, not according to Jesus. He says, I want you in here or I want you to get out of here. You decide now. I'm not trying to preach people into the church. And when we start here in 3C and all our 36 venues, our 58 services throughout the, when we start getting the crowd element, then I know it's time to preach people out of the church. You've got to understand what it means to serve the Lord. We don't need church attendees. We need warriors in the army of the Lord. And that's why 
You've got to decide now. You've got to choose. Choose, the, choose this day whom you will serve. And that's why Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse 23, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me does what? Scatter. So a half-hearted Christian and a lukewarm Christian destroys and breaks down. And that's why it's better out because you're discouraging people to do the work. So if you want to go and be a sinner, go. But choose. Say with me, the battle rages. Why? Because the devil's plotted over thousands of years against God, against creation, wanting to distort who God is. Satan thought he was successful when he crucified Jesus, but he didn't have foresight. Unbeknownst to him, by killing Jesus, he gave Jesus access to his domain. The domain of death. See, legally, it was given up by Adam. God never had the right to that domain until the devil killed Jesus, an innocent man, and death could not hold him. But as the devil opposes Christ, he's going to oppose everybody that follows Christ. And that's why the battle rages. Say it me, the battle rages. We have many cute people say, well, can't we all just get along? No, no, no. No, no, no. We're not going to get along with the devil. It is a fight. It is a battle. And you've got to make a choice. Do you want to win or do you want to lose? Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So a fight is not against people. We're not fighting human beings. Therefore, when we're talking about wrestling, we're talking about hand-to-hand combat, combat. It is a personal battle. Say with me, it's a personal battle. Bump your neighbor and say, this battle is personal. And tell your neighbor, and by the way, stop fighting me. Stop fighting me. And if we read with the sower, Matthew chapter 13, when the, when the word is given, everyone who hears the word and does not understand it, he says the wicked one comes and he snatches away what is sown in the heart. Yeah. Satan immediately comes to take the word. He's there to oppose. He's there to attack. He's there to try to stop the work of God in the life of every believer. When you gave your life to Jesus, you've chosen a side. The devil's like a roaring lion. Just as sure as if there's a God that loves you, there's a devil that hates you. And that's why 1 John 5 verse 8, he says, be sober. Bump your neighbor, be sober, be sober neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you can't be drunk. Seriously, tell your neighbor, you can't be drunk. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, resist him steadfast in the faith. Hallelujah. Say with me, resist him steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers in the world. And therefore, as Christians... We're not called to a life of ease, of comfort. We're called to a spiritual battle. We're called to a war. It's a struggle. The battle rages. Shout out, the battle rages. Shout it out, the battle rages. Christianity is not a playground. It's a battleground. Stop playing around. Many want to live on easy street, just sitting back and counting their blessings. But if you are a follower of Christ, the battle will rage. And our choice is whether you want to win or whether you want to lose, whether you're going to advance, whether you're going to retreat. Most people are just comfortable looking for the, you know, 
looking just to go and dive in their little foxhole on the front line. You want to be in your foxhole and just sit, sit this one out and say, you know, I don't want trouble. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Either you're going to advance and be used by God or you're going to retreat. It's time to get out of those foxholes, dust off your clothes, put on that armor, polish it up, come on, sharpen that sword and get on with the fight. Because like it or not, you've been drafted into the army of God. You are called as a soldier in the army of God. And it's your choice whether you'll be a good soldier or a bad soldier. We must make that choice. God is looking for men and women ready to battle and ready to make the difference. It's time to toughen up. You can't be a spiritual wimp. (laughs) 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Bump your neighbor and said, I'm not scared of hard. Tell your neighbor, I'm not scared of difficult. Bump your neighbor said, I'm not scared of conflict. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, because I'm a soldier. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm a fighter. <laughs> not timid. Not given us a spirit of timidity. Won't be intimidated, but he's given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So no one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of life, verse, verse 4 says. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of life. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added. The affairs of life, God will take care. He'll help you. He'll give you the breakthrough. Those are not the things that you fight about. Those are not the things you worry about. Are you hearing me yet today? but it's time to toughen up. Some of us don't want that. The first of anything difficult, we're ready to bail, throw in the towel. I did not sign up for this. This isn't as easy as I thought it would be. When I gave my life to Jesus, I thought everything's going to go, whee. You fold under the, the power of the first little temptation that comes your way. The first time it gets a little bit tough. Then I wonder if you were a true believer to start off with. Look, if you're ready to follow the Lord, you're going to be tempted. If you're ready to follow the Lord, you're going to face opposition. So recognize that. Embrace yourself for it. Why the battle we fight is spiritual. And therefore the weapons that we use are not human weapons, but it is powerful. It is what? Powerful. It is what? Powerful in God's warfare. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. You can think gangster, but don't do gangster. You got your way of solving it. And yes, you can see it and you can see gangster. You recognize it because you come out of gangster. But we don't solve problems according to gangster anymore. Can I get a big amen there? No, our weapons are are, are, are spiritual. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish, being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's why we pray. That's why the ladies got prayer mantle. You don't know how to pray, you better learn how to pray. Amen. Amen. That's why we get up at five and pray. That's why I've got the men with me on Wednesdays and we pray. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
And how about your other wimps? What you do? Huh? What do you do? Are you fighting in a fleshly way? You're 60 and you're still losing your temper like a 15-year-old? Still, your thing is your little thing. It's still... No, no, it, you're in a fight. If you're living there, no purpose. Not taking responsibility for your marriage and your children. Children not serving the Lord. Grandchildren not serving the Lord. But still, you're not praying. It's like, what the hell? Then explain to me then. Then why are you here this morning? Choose. Bump your neighbor, say choose. Choose, choose, choose. choose. Get some backbone. Say to me, the battle rages. We're fighting for the soul of the country while you're getting drunk on the weekend. You saw, you saw. What did we deal with now? You guys saw, right? You saw. We had another kid that committed suicide. We've had a kid commit suicide for the last four months every single week in one of the 80 schools that we work in. And what are you doing? Well, it's not my kid. It's not my responsibility. Seriously? The battle rages. We sit and we criticize and criticize the government and talking, yep, 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 talk about everything. But what are we doing? He says, choose. Am I probing you yet? I'm poking you. I want you to get so mad with me that you're going to change. I want you to be so mad with me that you come and talk about me right boop and tonight and the rest of the night so that God can keep on speaking to you. I want to provoke you to a holy anger. Is this helping somebody? Ish, the time is up. Sure. Romans 13, 11 says, and do this knowing the time. Two things he's saying here, be sober-minded. You can sit here, you can be mad, you can think. And, hey, and tomorrow we bury you. Say, oh, I'm going to do this next week, I'm going to do this, and whoop, and then you come and you come with the report. You don't have control, sir. Doesn't matter how much money you have. We need God in our lives. It's a critical time that we are living in. He says, knowing the critical strategic period of time. The New Living Translation says it's all the more urgent. Time is running out. And therefore, I want to encourage us to get out of our comfort zone and get into the battle. And I'm not here to scare you about the talk of battle. The good news is that the battle is the Lord's. That out of ourselves we cannot win it. Out of ourselves we cannot conquer. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, You are God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. If temptation comes your way, that's good. If you're comfortable in your life 
and there's no conflict, there's nothing, well, then you're doing something wrong. But you see, when you start doing the work of the Lord, you'll have resistance. You'll have fight against you. You'll have conflict come your way. But the thing is, where there's an attack on your life, God will give you a way of escape. The battle is the Lord's. When Jesus said, it is finished. That reverberated in the heavens and the earth. Every demon heard, it is finished. We are fighting a winning battle. Because the war is already won. But there's battles that we need to conquer in every life. And I wonder if we can stand to our feet just there where you are. Become aware of the presence of God. Some of you have stopped fighting. But the battle rages. Some of you have become despondent. But the battle rages. Some of you are sitting down, but the battle still rages. Doesn't matter. Feeling sorry for yourself, you're crying for yourself. But the battle still rages. The battle for the soul of your kids, the battle for the soul of the grandkids, the battle for the soul of our nation, the soul of our continent. Who's responsible? You and me. And it's time to repent. Say to me, repent. Yes. Say, Lord, I'm done with lukewarm. I'm done with average. I'm done with complaining. I'm done with murmuring. I'm done with making excuses for my sin. But today we're going to give it over to the Lord. So I'm not standing here as if I've got it together. Please don't think I'm preaching down on anybody. Every day I need Jesus in my life to accomplish what I need. And I need fellow colleagues and friends that are on fire for Jesus. And you need the same. Not here, we're not here doing it alone. But you've got to make a choice. I wonder if you can lift up your hands just right there where you are. And say with me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive, me forgive me for being complacent. Today I make a decision and I choose to serve you. I declare today, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I decide today to choose life, to choose blessing, to choose you. I'm enlisted in the army of the Lord and I'm ready, Lord, to be used by you Wherever you want me, here I am, Lord. Use me. I make a decision today that I will fight and I will learn how to fight. I will learn how to conquer. But I've made the choice today. I will serve you. No more cold, no more lukewarm Christian. But I will serve you with all that is within me. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe there's somebody here you have not yet given your life to Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity. God loves you so, so very much. And like I said, if you're not a Christian, you're controlled. You're controlled by the evil one. You don't even know. <laughs> he leads and guides, energizes. But you can be free today. You can be free today from yourself from your issues from the prison you find yourself in if you acknowledge God in your life and say Lord I'm a sinner I need you God will forgive you he'll cleanse you and he'll change you transform you give you meaning and purpose in your life 
But for that to happen, you've got to make that choice. You've got to make that decision. Therefore, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, there's somebody here today, you've not yet given your life to Jesus, you want to do it, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Or if you're backslidden, you're not serving God the way you should, and you want to come back to the Lord today. If that's you, I want to pray for you. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to quickly raise your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands going up all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All over the place, at the back there, in the sides. Thank you very much. Put your hands down. Some of you thinking, well, I can do this another time. I'm not ready for this now. Jesus says today is the day of salvation. Today you hear God speaking to you now. Now is the time. No one's guaranteed they'll be alive tomorrow. It's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of the day. That's a fact. That's a fact. You might leave this place and think, well, I'm going to do it again. But never sense you need God again. But one day you'll stand, whether it's 20, 30 years from now, you'll stand before God. You'll say, remember, I spoke to you that day. You rejected me. Please don't miss out on the calling of God upon your life. He's speaking to you now. You'll never, ever be able to say ever again, you did not know. You know today. Today you know. Therefore, I want to give you one more chance. If you never raise your hand, quickly slip it up now. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, put your hands down. Now, I wonder if you can do one more thing for me. If you raised your hand, it's so important that I do a personal prayer with you. And if you raised your hand, won't you just grab your belongings and throughout all our venues, quickly come out in the aisles, come stand in front. Come on. Yes. Come on. Bow your heads in prayer. Say these words with me. Say to me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. I acknowledge that I'm a sin. Please forgive me. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, my whole life, I give to you. I surrender unto you. Thank you, Lord, that you change me, transform me according to your word as I've received you and believe. I have the right to be called the child of God. And thank you, Lord, as from now, I belong to you and nothing can snatch me out of your hands because I am yours. Lord, I pray for each and every one of these, your children, every power of the devil is broken, every curse removed right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that they belong to you. You lead and guide them in all things that will grow to become that which you've called them to be, the original design and purpose over their life fulfilled is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my 3 c TV. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY 
followed by your prayer request to 33347. And our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347. And one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates, and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.